Hey, I'm in a new location. This is an unofficial video that um, I'm going to do because I forgot to read any books in the last week. Okay, that's not quite true, but there were two books I left off last month's uh, sci-fi adventure um, series, Rocket Summer. One I forgot to mention was Empire by Clifford D. Simak. Oops, got a little preview there of another video I was watching. Uh, good book. It's interesting for a galactic empire or a space empire type book because it's a totally solar, uh, local solar system based empire. A guy that's an emperor of in our own solar system, which is kind of odd when you think about it because usually a galactic empire, I keep calling it galactic, but usually an empire in a space opera spans many star systems. But of course, an empire that spans many planets, many colonies, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, moons, would be much, much huger, huger, more huge, larger than a uh, Earth-based empire, yet it somehow feels kind of uh, confined and closed just because of the vastness of space, I guess. I, I don't know why I felt like I had to say that. Um, that was my impression of it. The other book I read after the night after I did my last video, which is probably over a week ago now, I read one more Harry Harrison novel. Oh, I'm going to get some glare here. The Stainless Steel Rat, the first Stainless Steel Rat book, um, which is uh, the only one that's available free on Project Gutenberg. Uh, there's about eight books in this series, I think. Spread over a very long time, spread over from like the early 60s to <clears throat> the end of his life in the 80s or early 90s. Um, I really, really liked it. It was kind of a, he's kind of a intergalactic con man, scammer guy who gets drafted as often con man, scammer guys do in book series, gets drafted by some kind of government organization and forced to do good. Uh... Yeah, I want to read the rest of these, so I hope hopefully I can get through a bunch of more um, books and get off this stupid uh, 100 book challenge, which I'm pretty close to. I don't know. I'll put the number in the um, in the. Uh, oops, lost my page. I'll put the I'll put the full count in 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 the in the description of how many I'm on, but it's only two more than last time, whatever that was. So that's all I have to say. This is just a, a little uh, practice video to get me back in, in the mood of, of uh, uh, recording videos again. Hopefully I'll get more regular by the end of the month. I don't know. I'm doing a writing course right now. It's really not that challenging, but... but um, so there's really no excuse not to do videos. I have time to do it. It's too hot to go outside still anyway. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Those are my two books that ended up July. Um, for August, what have I done? I've been reading some comics, which is uh, on the Hoopla app. And I'll bring those up. I read this one, Superman in the 50s an anthology of Superman stories from the 1950s, um, which is a, a decade I, I didn't know that much about. I, I like the art from the, that decade, though. This is not uh, a terrific anthology, though. It just came out a couple years ago, I guess. It's about 350 pages, but, you know, it, it tries to do a mix of different stories of different characters and stuff. Like, it's got the first crypto story, the first the origin of Supergirl story. But it doesn't have the best stories. Like, the Supergirl story is not... It's just how she comes to Earth and how um, Kal-El or Clark Kent or Superman finds her or whatever. It sets her up in an orphanage. It's pretty wild. Uh, very basic stories. The stories are not very involved in the 50s. They're usually about 8 to 13 pages long, and I know that comics were had more pages in the 50s than they would have later. So when I was reading comics in the 70s, there were about 22, 25-page -ish, uh, issues, one story. So I assume these had three or four stories in a book. They're, they're not very well-developed often. Um, 
I would have rather seen a different Supergirl story to see what her real actual adventures were like instead of, you know, her origin story, which is Clark finding her and just dropping her off at some orphanage <laughs> because he can't deal with having a, a a teenage ward. You know, he's he's only Superman. He can't be as responsible as Batman and take care of a, a young ward and see after the training. He just has to leave her with strangers. Uh, for whatever reason, although uh, Bruce Wayne was able to train multiple Robins and still have time to do his other job, but who knows? Um, but the the art was more interesting than the stories for the most part. And I read this uh, short one by Archie Godwin and Walter Simonson called Manhunter. It's a very short series; it only ran about nine. It was a backup feature in, I believe, Detective Comics. Uh, which revived a character from the 50s in a short run in the 70s. Um, the art was good. Uh, the stories were hard to follow. Again, I guess I'm just really not in the mindset of reading comics. It is kind of different part of the brain sometimes. And I'm currently reading these uh, these Batman stories from the 70s by uh, illustrated by Jim Aparo. These are these are episodes of, or these are issues of Brave and the Bold, which he, Jim Aparo, um, who, who uh, is one of the great Batman artists, um, you know, kind of comparable to Neil Gaiman, probably second. I don't know what's going to download now. I thought I could open it up. Probably, of that era, probably the second most popular to, I said Neil Gaiman, Unfortunate misspeaking. I meant Neil Adams. I don't need to speak about any other Neils at this point in time. Anyway, Jim Aparo, I liked very much. And some of these Brave and the Bold issues, I do remember. There's a uh, there's a team up with Sergeant Rock. That was an issue I had, actually. There was a team up with Wonder Woman, the strange 70s Wonder Woman, where she's... I don't know if she's got powers or not. She wears a white pantsuit for some reason. They try to revamp the character and made her kind of a super spy or something. Not a very interesting iteration of the character. But they're fun and they're just so beautifully drawn, which is really what appeals to me in old comics. I really don't even care that much about the stories. I just like to see what they like. They look like at that time. Oh, well, here's a movie. I don't know if I talked about this. This is such a great movie. This was, uh, I watched this a long time ago. It's just in my queue here, still from Hoopla. Stage goes by John Wayne. You gotta see that movie if you haven't. It. It's one of the best westerns, 1939. Fantastic. Okay, that's probably enough talk. Uh, I know what I'm gonna read for Garbog for the first week. I believe the first through the 11th is free, free, free swim. Um, on Garbagas, where you just read anything without any kind of prompts, and there's some other interesting prompts coming up later, which I can probably keep to. I'm going to start with some free ones. I mean, some uncategorized ones. I, I have an idea of what to read, but I guess I'll talk about that if I actually read them. Okay, thanks. See you later.